So um, I'm going to get started then and uh, begin with our uh, morning liturgy, which I've, I've pinned to the top of the Facebook uh, comments. So I'm going to begin by lighting my candle and um, you're welcome to light a candle if you have one as well. to say the prayer then. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. For with you is the well of life and in your light shall we see light. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. We wait for you, O God. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. We wait for you, O God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. We wait for you, O God. And so I'm going to read today's collect now. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power and come among us, and with great might succour us, that whereas thou, uh, through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us. Your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom... Uh, with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. So I'm going to read today's psalm, and that's Psalm 62. Um, just yeah. Okay, so Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you? As you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence. Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their, inward, with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone my soul waits in silence. For my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honour. My mighty rock, my refuge in, is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. For you repay to all according to their work. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen.
So I'm now going to read um, our Isaiah passage. And um, if you're just joining us for the first time today, we've been um, following the lectionary readings, taking us through Advent up to Christmas. And these are the readings um, that we've been following for morning prayer. So we've been looking at Isaiah, um, the sort of second half of Isaiah. So today we're at Isaiah 47. Come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter Chaldea. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Remove your veil. Strip off your robe, uncover your legs. Pass through the rivers. Your na nakedness shall be uncovered and your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into the darkness, daughter Chaldea. For you shall no more be called the mistress of kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profane my heritage. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy on the aged you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. You said, I shall, be your mis I shall be mistress forever, so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. Now therefore hear this, you lover of pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. Both these things shall come upon you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray. And I said in your heart, and you said in your heart, I am and there is no one besides me. But evil shall come upon you, which you cannot charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, which you will not be able to ward off. And ruin shall come upon you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries with which you have laboured from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many consultations. Let those who study the heavens stand up and save you. Those who gaze at the stars and at each new moon predict what shall befall you. See, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the, from the power of the, fl of the flame. No coal for warming oneself is this. No fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have laboured, who have trafficked with you from your youth. They all wander about in their own paths. There is no one to save you. Well, um, as usual, please do write your comments in uh, in the box on the side and uh, and I'll, I'll come kind of work my way through those in a moment. Um, I'll, I'll just maybe feed in some of my own thoughts and then uh, and then I'll read it, read the passage again. But um, it's I feel like it needs a bit of a deep breath. This one, it's quite heavy and um, it's entitled in, in this Bible, the NRSV, uh, the humiliation of Babylon. And it definitely feels like that. Um, and it's interesting, really. I, I think sometimes when I first read passages like this, I think, gosh, that's harsh. God is very harsh. You know, that, the, he, um, the, the vengeance that seems to be acted out. But actually, as I, as I was reading it more and also reading just around, um, let me just get my notes up, around the kind of context of the passage, um, the more it sort of seems as though... Uh, you know, Babylon had its fall, and um, and I mean, 
whether you view that as God's action against Babylon or Babylon's um, sort of inevitable actions against itself. I don't know. And so I was sort of thinking about that really. Um, you know, the, there was no more king and, and the, the sort of the, the childlessness um, is more to do with the, the lack of inhabitants in Babylon, I think, rather than that, that sort of happening as a sort of direct action. I think it's more that when Babylon fell, people were scattered and uh, there was no king on the throne anymore. Um, hence it, it being widowed. Um, and and there there are no offspring anymore to continue the Babylonian line. It's it becomes childless. So I think it's not kind of those aren't um, you know things that happen to people. That this is these are metaphors. Um, so uh, yes, and that, that was just I mean I think I think what what keeps on coming through is this this sort of um, almost like a refrain. You know I I am and there is no one besides me um, and. And there's, um, I guess, there's this sort of repetition of Babylon's arrogance, and and it's um, if I just go to the psalm, I think the psalm really speaks into this um, when it talks about um, about let me just see um, those of low estate are but a breath, those of high estate are a delusion. And I think that's. That's what's being sort of exposed here is Babylon's delusion that um, that all its power and authority um, is some kind of eternal state, or um, or even more important than honouring God as the steadfast reality in life. Um, okay, I'm going to read it again then, and then we can get into um, the comments. Come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter Chaldea. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the milestones and grind meal. Remove your veil. Strip off your robe and uncover your legs. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered and your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, daughter of Chaldea, for you shall no more be called the mistress of kingdoms. I was angry with my people, I profane my heritage, I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy, on the aged you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. You said, I shall be your mistress forever so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. Now, therefore, hear this, you lovers of pleasure, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. Both these things shall come upon you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in, a, in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and great power and the great power of your enchantments. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray. And you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. But evil shall come upon you, which you cannot charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, which you will not be able to ward off, and ruin shall come upon you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries, with which you have laboured from your, from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed, perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied, and um, you are wearied with your many consultations. Let those who study the heavens stand up and save you, those who gaze at the stars, and at each new moon predict what you shall what shall befall you. See, they are like stubble, the fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. 
No coal for warming oneself is this. No fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have laboured, who have trafficked with you from your youth. They all wander about in their own paths. There is no one to save you. Okay. So let's just have a little look here. I mean, it does, yeah, I mean, Sue's just pointed, not read this before, ouch. I think, I mean, certainly there's something slightly chilling about that final line, there is no one to save you. And, um, yeah, I think it is, um, it's hard to hear that line. And I think that's why it's, it's really nice to read the psalm, which speaks about, um, well, I think I think it speaks into sort of God coming, coming to those who sort of throw themselves on Him and surrender themselves um, to God, and this, and acts as though God is the only well, the only refuge. Um, I mean, it's about like it says in the psalm, put no confidence in. Well, it talks about other things, but don't you know if riches increase, don't set your heart on them. So even in um, I guess Babylon's success, there's a sort of warning, you know, that's not going to last forever. Uh, the only thing steadfast is God. Um, yeah, Vivian's is picking up on the, um, yeah, using the, the image of, um, of a woman, a woman's body to expose and to speak of the decline of Israel. I think, yeah, and what I was reading about this, um, what I was reading about this is that um, women who showed their legs and, and who waded in rivers and things were often women of lowly status. And, um, and so it's, it's this sort of comparison between, um, you know, once a, once in, you know, a woman in all her glory was, I think it's about the humiliation of Babylon um, as opposed to Israel. But I guess part of this is a message for Israel too. And yes, that's right. Sorry, no, you're right. I'm getting that wrong, aren't I? This is the earlier part of, um, is it? Well, I think it does refer to Israel saying, I gave Israel over to Babylon. But essentially, this is about Babylon's fall, I think. So um, I think this is an image of Babylon, the virgin daughter, who was once sort of crowned in glory and now... Um, Yes, is compared to a woman of lowly status, but it is, it's very graphic and it's, it's sort of, it, I find it as a woman, I find it quite sort of humiliating to be, yeah, sort of the body being used in that sort of objectified way. Um, yeah. Yes, it is. It feels, um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of quite can God punishing Babylon. Sally's just saying, isn't this God pun pun punishing Babylon for capturing um, and roilering? Oh, I don't know. I think I know that word. Roilering the Jews. Yeah, I think that's it, though. Um, but I always feel for the innocent Babylonians who suffered because of the, of the greed and warlike nature of their leaders. Yeah, I mean... I don't, I don't know, um, a few years ago, I remember, uh, I, can't, I can't quite think of the situation, but I was thinking about the, the sort of wealth that we enjoy in the West and thinking, you know, actually for a long time in my life, I, you know, put myself in the position of the, um, the you know, the, the one that, that God is rescuing or the one that God um, is acting for, you know, because I see myself as the Gentile or whatever. Um, and, uh, and then it occurred to me that actually, you know, I, well, actually I'm on the side of the oppressor, you know, we're the wealthiest nations in the world and how do we use our wealth and how do we oppress others? And I think there's some really, really uncomfortable home truths in this passage as well for us. You know, what, what are we doing to, uh, to raise up other nations and, or actually are we just perpetuating oppression okay so i'll go back to some some of the uh 
um, comments. Yeah, everyone's just saying, um, what is why we need to trust in God alone in all things? Is that the question, sorry? Why, why we need to trust God alone in all things? I think that's, okay, so it's replying to Vivian. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Sally just mentioning that it's um, just continuing this conversation that's that is about the sort of humiliating imagery of women and the loss of children and things. I mean, it's, I think it is definitely used um, metaphorically here, but, um, but still very difficult to read. And and actually, Sally picks up, you know, Hebrew Bible written by men, whole Bible probably written by men. That's that's a tough thing, you know. Um, and they, I just, yeah, I think they often might not have thought of how they this language might come across to women. Hmm. So I'm just uh, reading these comments here about um, about about women and how we see women. Jackie makes an interesting point about water. We always see water as a purifier. Um, and yes, I think that's that is true. And I I think. I'm not quite sure in this, I think it's more about the the type of work that that um, women or slave women in particular would have done wading in water, which is, I think this isn't quite used in that, in that way as you suggest, but it is a shame. Um, yeah. And yeah, Kath, Babylon was an empire. Yes. Okay. Just Rosalind picking up as well on this, um, on that women are often used as a symbol of humiliation and wickedness. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And Sue saying, God said men should treat women as themselves. Mm, yes. Yeah. So I think um, I think if we we can we can look at this in lots of ways. I suppose we can um, focus on the the sort of portrayal of women in this quite humiliating way, um, or we can maybe look to at this this sort of wider message about um, a, a, a nation. Um, who had become uh, sort of so proud and reveling in its own wealth and success that it had ultimately not seen its own downfall. And I don't know, that's sort of what struck me today, but um, I think um, I think we can, if, unless there are any more comments coming through, we might uh, might bring things to a close there. Before, before I get people too riled up, I think there's a, there's a, a heated discussion going on now about uh, men writing the Bible and things. So, I think um, we might put it put it leave it there and uh, and turn our attention to praying to God, a genderless, almighty God, um, who sees all the imperfections in the Scripture and in us. So. Uh, Let's, yeah, let's turn, turn our eyes to pray now. 
Well, let's begin by praying for, uh, for the church. Lord, after reading a passage like this, we are um, painfully aware of how, um, how human the Bible is and how it's written by, by people who have their own biases and agendas. But I pray that we, um, we can also see, see your message speaking through. We ask for forgiveness um, as, as Christians for where we've misunderstood or misrepresented your words. And we pray and seek more wisdom. We pray for, uh, we pray for people, um, well, we pray for women who have been humiliated by men. We pray for the hurt and damage caused. And we pray for healing. And we pray um, and give thanks for the gift of this new day. We pray for our world. We especially think of the injustice and imbalance in our world and for our part in that. We pray that we might have the humility to uh, throw ourselves on you like David did in the Psalms that we, well, in the Psalm that we read today declaring that uh, you are steadfast and our fortress. We pray for countries that we know are uh, in conflict, in war, or where the people are oppressed. We continue our prayers for Ethiopia. asking for continued uh, peace and reconciliation work. We pray for the Brexit negotiations. And we pray for the motivations of those leaders meeting to discuss the future. We pray their intentions are good. God, give them wisdom. And we pray for things closer to home. We pray for our local communities. We pray for people um, as they make their Christmas plans. We give thanks for our Christmas tree festival, 
for all those that have made that happen. For Sue locking up the gates at night. We thank you that this festival uh, is blessing the community it's in. We pray for those struggling to um, struggling to adhere to, to the restrictions that are still in place as they try and make plans and uh, shop. We know that there's a big influx of people shopping in Liverpool city centre at the moment. And we pray that they might do that wisely and safely. we pray that we don't all get caught up with the consumerism of Christmas, which is so easy to do. We pray for ways that um, we can connect with people that are creative and we pray for God's inspiration. And we think of those we know today who are struggling. We pray for those who are grieving. We ask God that you comfort them. We think especially of those people who are not looking forward to Christmas at all. We pray for peace. And finally, we pray for ourselves, giving to God the tasks of the day ahead the concerns that we have. We ask that we might meet God in the ordinary, everyday activities of life. And that we might be surprised by joy. So let's draw our prayers together with the Lord's Prayer. And today I'm praying um, from just the, the words from the Bible, but you can join in with that or you can say the Lord's Prayer in whichever way you feel most familiar and comfortable. So our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Amen. So I'll read our concluding prayers. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Peace be to the whole community with love and faith. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the community communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Well, thank you so much for the discussion this morning. I see that things, lots more comments have come in since, um, since I started praying. So um, 
thank you so much for that uh, lively discussion this morning and for your for your insights into what is quite a difficult passage so thank you everyone um we will be we will be back tomorrow and um i'm just thinking who will be doing that i think it's miranda with you um but uh, yes we'll we'll be we'll be here again at 9:15 tomorrow morning so i hope you have a good day and uh, see you all again soon <laughs>